Thank you. It's so nice to see you. I know it's very late there. It's almost midnight or an hour before midnight. So we really yeah. appreciate you staying up for us. And you are calling in from your office, I see. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, right after my work, I have probably no time to get home. Mm. <laughs> you work long hours. Or star or meeting now. <laughs> yeah. And is your office fully operating right now or have you had to take it easy because of the pandemic? Uh, it's hard to see the fully operate, but uh, you know, for example, normally every year we have more inter students or, or staff, you know, working at this moment, but uh, uh, we are, you know, restricted by the regulation, you know, quarantine and so on right now is, uh, you know, part of the, our staff and the students working in my studio. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose that um, also the, the um, pandemic has meant that a lot of projects are interrupted as well, including the one that we'll be spending time about um, today, the Jing Dishan Imperial Kiln Museum, which has had a delayed opening. But before we get to that, can you just say a little bit about what the situation has um, done to affect your practice and the rhythm of your planning? Yeah, uh, things, uh, you know, after the February, Chinese, right after Chinese New Year, is uh, the whole country was uh, locked because of the pandemic. Mm. And uh, things uh, in uh, initial, based on our initial plan, Imperial Q Museum is going to open on March 15. Right now we have, we have, to, we have to postpone the the opening. Um, but uh, when the situation getting better, we are ready to restart to, to work, but uh, Beijing is uh, follow into the serious situation again. Mm. Uh, right now we are part of a lock, sounds like. Uh, you know, became to the, the Beijing became to the more sensitive the city now in China. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, you have our, uh, all of our wishes for good health, both you and your staff and all your family and friends. Um, the good news is that the building is constructed and complete. Um, and yes. so there's a lot for us to look at. Shall we go ahead and start looking at images and uh, hearing the story of the Jing Dijian Imperial Kiln Museum? Okay, yeah. So you have a lot to look at. Um, and I suppose um, might, we might just start by you saying a little bit about how the project came your way. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Glenn, to, uh, for letting me to give a talk and uh, that, a design dialogue. It's such a great honor you know, for me to share my work, my experience, um, my thoughts with everyone. Uh, in the early of uh, 2016, I was invited by the local government to design the Imperial Kill Museum. Uh, in the beginning, I feel less confident uh, to, to take this job because not, uh, not only the sensitive of the side, but also, uh, you know, I'm not really confident if government, uh, they really can proceed based on, you know, my proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, after a few years later, it has been complete in terms of the, the structure and architecture. Uh, we are planning to open, you know, fully open in maybe October this year, including the interior, everything. So this is the image from, maybe I talked uh, like almost one year ago. Before we talk about uh, the design, maybe I can give you brief, the background about Jingdezhen. Jingdezhen is located in the southeast part of China, just, on, just 100 kilometers south of the Yangtze River. Jingdezhen is known as a porcelain capital in the world because it has been producing pottery for 1,000 
700 years in the Ming and Qing dynasties, Jing Dezhen explored a huge amount of porcelain to the Europe. The most of the Chinese porcelain in many the important museums of the world, for example, like British Museum, the Victoria Albert Museum, Metro, Metropolitan Museum, a lot of porcelain actually came from the, came from the Jing Dezhen. So you can get a sense about uh, this, uh, you know, nature setting. If, if we went back maybe 300 years, it just looks like this kind of uh, nature driving river, mountain surrounding, low density and the low rise, the housing adjacent by the river forest. This is a Song Dynasty. Uh, we call five most important the porcelain kiln, you know, in, in Chinese history. Uh, Chai Ru Jun Ge Ding is more like, a, you know, very famous uh, in in the in the porcelain industry. Uh, but unfortunately, during the Song Dynasty, uh, Song Dynasty those five kiln was destroyed uh, when Mongolia invasion because all five kiln was located in the north part of uh, China. But the Jing Dezhen is a survival because, uh, because of the location. This is a, a in Song Dynasty, Jing Dezhen produced the greenish white porcelain. It's very thin, uh, like paper, and the color like jade. So we call this is a uh, Jing Dezhen, the porcelain character. And uh, in Yuan Dynasty, because of uh, Gaolin soil has been found, and uh, the white porcelain has been first. Uh, has been produced, uh, you know, first time in personal history. Uh, around a similar time, and the blue clay was imported from Iran, and the blue and the white porcelain, you know, became to the signature of the Yuan Dynasty. If we go uh, Ming, start from Ming Dynasty, uh, we can see the, the porcelain start to show in the multicolor, it's not only just the blue and white or single color. So they start to the, we call Doucai and the multicolor. And also Star Ming Dynasty, Jing Dezhen became the imperial kill. Uh, you know, start to provide a lot of product to the, to the emperor family. So this image maybe uh, this image caught by the the American dip, uh, diplomatic officer uh, in early of the last century. I, I saw this in 1920, right? This is a more like showing the uh, you know some image. Uh, he also spent a lot of time in Jing Dezhen. He you know he described his. Uh, Jing Dezhen experience. The situation of Jing Dezhen is perfect from Chinese point of view. The city is located between the mouths of two rivers which flow into the North River, one from east and one from west. Beautiful hills completely surrounding the city, the river bank, are dotted with piney and camper trees while occasional growth of bamboo in the lighter green add charm and beauty. I found a soft, soft, uh, softness and the beauty typical of another war, a tropical war. So they gave us a, a lot of uh, description about, uh, you, know, uh, you know, situation in early the last century like this two image. Uh, like a boat to transport white clay brick and the wood to the to the to the kiln. The beyond bank, you can see many uh, defective. The the porcelain was uh, destroyed. You know things uh, 
uh, because of the, the, the quality requirement. Uh, you know, this is a more like a mountain. Uh, you can see the workshop uh, Jason with Q. So this is a, like uh, exactly the situation early for last century. Even go back to the, the 18, early for 18th century, uh, the French missionary, the Yan Hongxu, he, uh, he spent most of his life in Jinzhen, actually. He described his experience in, in the city. The porcelain kiln was distributed almost everywhere in Jingdezhen during the night surrounding mountain, just like a foreign's wall was totally reflecting the red color of the kiln fire all night long. So we can, you know, through the, the historical, the image, we can get a sense about Jingdezhen, actually Jingdezhen is the maybe first industrial the city in China. Mm. Earlier set, uh, settlement of a city developed around the Qum complex. This is a, like a Qum. So they built the Qum first, and then adjacent they built uh, some uh, workshop and housing together. Uh, the the street, street pattern you, you can see this is a, like a, today's the, the situation, workshop, team, they're always working together. The, the street pattern also showing the, the how people survive. If you close up to look at this fabric, the, the small alleys always perpendicular to, uh, you know, approach to the, this major river they call Chang River. Uh, in order to transport a porcelain, you know, product to the, to the, to the river side. But the major commercial side always along with the river to bring the business, uh, the social life and the market, everything together. So people shopping along this major street, but a small alley is very narrow uh, to, you know, bring, bring the, you know, people to the, to the river. You can see this is a small alley. The, the very tiny, but uh, they have special reason because local, the climate is so difficult for the, for the people in summer, it's very hot. So people has to, have to survive under the shade. So the, the small alley can provide a uh, very good, uh, you know, shading during the, during the summer. Um, even today, uh, there, there, there are many, you know, like ruins of the kiln. This is Imperial a Relic Park, and also adjacent a lot of privy kiln ruins surrounding the Imperial kiln. Since uh, uh, Imperial kiln, sometimes they have to rely on the privy, the, the workshop and the kiln to to produce the enough uh, products for the, for the emperor family. So you can see the Huang Jiayao, Liu Jiayao, many, many, you know, private kiln. In the earlier uh, uh, my trip in Jingdezhen, uh, I was always wondering in the historical area to, to see, you know, how people live, you know, how climate, affect the people's, you know, the, the housing, you know, how they work. Uh, I carefully to watch the one, the historic kiln, you know, reconstruction. So this is a photo I, photo I took during, you know, my early trip. Uh, you, I'm, you know, I was fascinated by the, the local, the, the craftsmen, you know, how they make this kiln. So this is a very, you know, short of um, the, the video to showing, you know, how they use very light, small size brick, use a special, you know, mat to, to build this uh, very thin shawl. Uh, you know, when they making the, this kiln, you, you know, without scaffolding, they just use brick by brick. But you also can, 
discovered you know detail how they use finger uh, to control the you know curvature of the, this uh, cube in order to achieve the, the one way is higher another way is lower to based on the the, the temperature and the heat flow mr jupe can i ask a question about this sure this part of it um do you think that there is a preference uh among the people in Jing Dezhen to work in traditional ways as opposed to introducing new technology for production? Is that something that they hold on to for reasons of symbolic importance? This is a depends. You, you know, in, after 1949, the Jing Dezhen also has been built a lot of factories, more than like 15 or 10 huge the factory they use um, like a gas to burning the you know porcelain uh, but a lot of people right now is uh, go back to use more traditional kiln be because some people want to um to get very refined the quality mm. you know like a huge turnal like a turnal type kind of a kiln maybe know, they can produce the daily product for the for the arts to work you know they prefer use this because uh, things they use wood, uh, natural material, uh, and then they can you know make porcelain. They have their the own character. It's very different a little bit, but maybe somewhere else. So there's really a spectrum of different ways of making the ceramics. Then yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, the, uh, the factory has been bankrupt right now, so most of um, you know, the craftsmen people, they use this traditional kiln. Uh, some use, uh, maybe young people, they start to try to use small kiln with uh, maybe like electricity, you know, you know this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So this is also the photo I took. So you can see they use, uh, they not use scaffolding, but they use this, uh, the big size of brake to balance of the, you know, force since this shell is so thin, like an ice shell. It, it, it's, uh, you know, when you're burning the porcelain, the temperature getting higher. Uh, if without this balance, they're going to be maybe, mm. maybe falling apart. Um, not only the, uh, uh, you know, if we're talking about this kiln, you, you know, this kiln not only produce the porcelain, but also became to the social place for the people in history. Mm. The, like uh, what I mentioned before, Jingdezhen climate is so difficult. You know, winter is so cold, summer is hot. Winter, a lot of people going to gathering adjacent to the, this kiln to take advantage from the heat. Mm. And, uh, you know, for example, like a small student when they on the way to the school, they just uh, you know take one one break, put it in the bag in order to they can warm whole day long. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know sometimes school, you know like a school going to move the whole school into the this uh, kiln place, you know in order to they feel very warm. But uh, like a like a, you know even when the when the uh, this uh, the kiln temporarily uh, not burning the porcelain, lot of, you know, like people gathering here, they wash the clothes, they, they you know, to dry the clothes inside this kiln. Even like shower, the hair, you know, like a girl, they take a advantage of this break, they take shower and then they easy to dry up. So, in, you know, in general from the history, a lot of people consider the kiln is, is, is the social place. They, they became to their one of the social anchor. Uh, a lot of people, you know, always getting here. Uh, this is a one, you know, now this, the phenomenon is quite interesting based on my observation. Things, uh, each kiln they has been demolished 80 times, you know, they're burning 80 times, almost like uh, less than two years. They have to demolish it in order to they can uh, to achieve the the demo, you know, requirement. Since this break no longer uh, the strong enough, they're going to tear it down. 
uh, most of the part, basement they remain. But this recycled brick, they're going to build housing, you know, almost whole city is built based on the recycled brick, even the like street, like a small alley, everything. So the kiln and the brick became to the, uh, their history, you know, more memory, you know, integrate with their, the whole culture. So this is a kind of a, uh, like a culture route. Let's talking about uh, uh, the project location. This is a, like, a, uh, if you know the history of Jingdezhen, this is a, like a Ming Dynasty historical area. If you go further south, this is a Yuan Dynasty. Continue go south is Song Dynasty. So Sanbao and Luo, uh, Luo Ma Qiao, and uh, this is uh, like a Ming Dynasty. So our site actually is the right, right spot, it's right center of the historical uh, neighborhood adjacent to uh, Imperial Kiln, the relic park. This here used to be surrounding by the, by the wall, you know, like a Imperial Kiln, you know, by the security reason. And then surrounding, you can still discover a lot of private, the, the Kiln, you know, his private Kiln. So this is our side. Uh, our side used to be occupied by the, the fire station, the, the building, the few building, and then after they demolished, they, they relocate. Uh, the city plan to build the Imperial Q Museum. The minute going to uh, contain the most, uh, the porcelain was excavated from the adjacent relic, you know, ruin area. Maybe some part from the forbid Beijing for forbidden city. So this is an early sketch. You can, you know, through those sketch, you can to, to get sense about, uh, you know, in the early of uh, my study, I, I tried to catch up the, the prototype of the cube. Uh, because this is a called the Imperial Q Museum. Uh, the, the also, I mentioned the, the Q is uh, became to the, 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 the city's life, you know, root of a culture, every, everything. Uh, so this is, uh, you can see the difference, uh, alternative and the idea, you know, some uh, this, uh, uh, the, the arch building along with the relic set, some are perpendicular, but I try to, you know, to, to integrate, um, you know, work closely to, with the neighborhood. This is an initial study. You can see the, the, the how I can, you know, pay attention about light, uh, for example, like horizontal cut and the vertical, you know, can, can generate uh, you know, beautiful light with uh, uh, with a break, the the vault kind of uh, the volume and uh, spatial character. So I also study about the break. Um, so this is our initial concept. Uh, you can see the the multi arch the structure. You know, along with the the imperial park, uh, you, you, know, uh, you know, carefully apply to, apply to the, apply to the, this neighborhood. You can see neighborhood, you, you know, it's not for, uh, in the same scale, you can see the 90 social housing, the historical housing, maybe 50 factory, big chain. Mm. Uh, so they were rich uh, and also historical, the pavilion adjacent. Um, so you can feel. Could I ask yeah. a quick question? Um, it's sure. very, it's so yes. interesting to see that you began already with this idea of the arched kiln right at the beginning of the project, and that was always key to the idea. Was there a competition that you entered with this idea, or was this a, a direct commission to uh, design the building? This is a like commission. 
uh, like what I said in the beginning, I'm not confident the government, uh, like like a mayor and the party secretary of the city, sitting you know in my office waiting for me very very late. I think so. <laughs> I went out to dinner. They they come back a few times. They show in their you know attitude. They try to you know turn down the previous competition design. Uh, things they feel this design is not uh, good for the historical um, the, the city, so they contact me. Uh, so this is a very special case. But uh, you know, most of uh, uh, our project right now is commission. You, you know, things uh, we carefully about uh, the competition things you don't know. The what's the result? Yeah. 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 Is that model itself actually made of clay, by the way? No, this is a bad wood. Sounds okay. like a uh, bad wood. Yeah, maybe clay is going to, you know, more interesting. So uh, through the, this, uh, like a set plan or, or axon, uh, you can actually, you can, you know, get a sense about the scale of this museum. We're uh, not to try to use one huge the, the space to cover everything. We try to, you know, to divide it into the like a 10 more half dozen, you know, arch structure in order to we can easy to readjust position to integrate with, uh, you can see this profile and uh, so people actually start approach this museum. People going to walk, you know, walk on along that is open view, uh, which is a uh, relic park, and then go they wandering go underneath the green canopy to get on the water bridge uh, into the you know into the, this this museum. So in general, you know, overall experience this museum is they facing to the west. Uh, you know, open view, you, feel, you know, people can feel the view coming uh, very relaxed to under the shade. They can go inside of them, this, this museum. So this is our, you know, different uh, model to showing, you know, we're doing a lot of study model in, this is our, you know, tradition in our, in our studio, we use uh, uh, you know, different material, different uh, scale, you know, you know, to to making our design. It's not uh, very computer driven. Things I I'm not trust computer in terms of the, the design process. I more trust, you know, my hand or my my thought. Mm -hmm. uh, in, I suggest our students in the beginning, they try to use uh, maybe like a tech technique like 3D printer to make a, a big scale of the model. But uh, I said no, because if we can now use a single cutter, use our hands to make this uh, the museum, uh, probably this museum won't, won't happen because mm -hmm. it's too difficult uh, to achieve. You can, you can feel this way, right? It's like a, Ten more the arch structure they it, you know were different in size curvature and uh, you know orientation everything is so difficult uh, you, you know it's not just standardized but uh, you have we have to find some way to make a system you know once we have uh, we discovered a way to make this model probably we're going to have some idea to how we make a construction, you know, this building. So I also gave you a general program, you know, when people walk in, you know, on this bridge surrounding, you know, adjacent is water, like a water you know, garden, I, I, I consider this water garden. You can walk into the, like a foyer area, when you turn this way, uh, the front one of the arch is going to be the auditorium for the for the museum. You also can continue go this arch. Actually, this is an open arch. This is not an interior. So you walk into the semi outdoor, and then you see the the the, the ruin. We integrate this ruin 
actually is after construction, we, we found out some new ruin and then we changed all the, our design, construction drawing, everything. So this also show, you know, proof our initial idea. We use uh, multi messing instead of just one huge volume of the space. So that's easy, we re readjust. So this is a small amphitheater. This is like an open arch. The open arch, this way, we, we create a lot of open arch to reflect in local hot weather, you know, to ventilate. And then you go inside again, you can see go down and then we basement, we have more the gallery space. Eventually you can get on this stair to back to the lobby. So this part, you're going to experience the like design shop, the book store and the cafe. Uh, so this is a temporary the exhibition space. We can go this way and then they leading you to the basement, to the temporary space. This is a, like an office entrance. This is like loading the, the truck and back into the, this arch to unload, you know, the, the, the personal stuff. So this is like office. We also integrate few courtyard. You can see one, two, three, four, maybe five, you know, small courtyard to, to give it the beautiful uh, the light to the basement, uh, basement level. I saw we had a question from one of the viewers about how large is the overall site of the museum? What's the scale of it? Uh, the, the, architect, uh, the building area is like 10,100. One, uh, yeah, like 10,000 uh, architecture area. And uh, if we're talking about this size, maybe I can have... Uh, oh. So this overall, you, you know, it's like, uh, uh, I remember it's 100, you know, 20 meters uh, in size. Uh, for the, for example, like this arch, uh, in order to control the, the, the scale, so things I really want to recreate a kind of uh, experience between the cube, brick cube, the porcelain product, and the human being, you know, scale. It's really more like a family or blood, uh, you know, system. So I, you know, we try very hard to, to reduce the size for the, you know, for the, this uh, in general, the, the size of the, this arch uh, in order to create a kind of an intimate. Things most of uh, the space under, underneath the, uh, uh, the ground actually is uh, under the you know, lower level. So we can achieve the, the, the very low building. Maximum high is under eight meters. So this is uh, like a old, you know, or, or physical model, model study. This is like a, we, we work on the experimental, the, the porcelain products. This is amazing. You know, we're very close to, the, to the, the final piece. So we still feel there's some, something missing. So in general, we are working on a lot of many in our office. We have many, many physical models to, you know, from, you know, different material, you know, we have different study uh, purpose, we use different uh, scale uh, in order to make sure this design can be, uh, you know, to make sure this design is, you know, what we want. So this is a section you can see the, the actually this is ground level, above ground only the eight meters tall. So this is uh, the situation when we start construction. Uh, the party secretary, mayor, and I, we sitting there, they call me, ask me to fly to Jingdezhen because they found out uh, not uh, ruin. And, and then fortunately, we make effort you know, to, to integrate into the, our design. It's much more powerful. Uh, things uh, expert from the National Heritage, they suggest as long as you relocate, it's okay. This is not uh, like an imperial, like a ruin. This is just a normal uh, private uh, workshop and the residential. 
Uh, and then we start to, you know, uh, get into the construction and uh, you can see the, the whole overall or, you know, construction side, this is a recycled the, the material as well. We work on the, you know, the, the worker work on the, 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 the mensary wall for the exterior. So you can see a lot of, lot of detail. So you can see this is the interior measuring the, the brake wall, the mix, the new brake and the old brake. Yeah, you can see this is a, the one of the interior people takes their walking down and then you can, you can actually, you can attach. That's give you a lot of um, imagination about, uh, you know, how, you know, where, where those brakes came from, you know, the, they maybe went back to the like uh, 300, 500 years ago. You can see this is break was uh, burning maybe many times, glazed. Uh, you know, they, they, they can make this uh, museum become to the more rich in terms of the, um, the, the memory. Was it so important to use, um, I apologize. No, go ahead, go ahead. Was it important to use new brick as part of the mix for strength? for the building? Uh, you mean new? Well, so you, you mixed new and old bricks together, I yeah. understand. Was that partly because you needed the new bricks for strength for the building? Uh, I think this is more reflect my, uh, my philosophy. I feel, you know, this uh, is uh, like contemporary the architecture. We cannot, uh, the first of all, you cannot find out so much historical the recycle the break, right? Things, uh, this uh, is not uh, more enough, uh, you, you know. And, and uh, secondly, I feel the, the we have to respect uh, the past. We based on the historic break size. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we use the local soil. And also you're, you're going to see a lot of the, 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 the chips you know, like uh, we call xia bo, you know, like a uh, case, porcelain case. When they're burning the, the, the porcelain, they have some uh, like pottery case. But uh, they, few times they're going to broken again. They became to the, like, uh, you know, you can re re recycle this material, local mm -hmm. soil, and then produce the, the new break. That's yeah. interesting that the bricks themselves have a kind of conversation between new and old and... Yeah, this may be similar like this, right? Surrounding, we're going to see a lot of historical, the building, this is a maybe built early for 90 social housing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I also would like to mention, uh, you know, kind of a, my design idea, things uh, I mentioned, I want to rediscover the root. Uh, one is culture root. I just mentioned, make the few, you know, uh, some idea like a break, like uh, the prototype of the arch, the cube. Uh, and also the climate root, since the local is so hot. So when you think about the design, you have to somehow to make a natural ventilate. We create a lot of like open arch, like this kind of arch, and also along with the major wind orientation, summer the wind is goes from south to north, and then we turn our the the tunnel into the south north orientation in order to wind can be totally concentrated. This building is not totally, you know, the the block the block the wind. Uh, at the same time, at the same time, we also can achieve the shape, right? It's more like their housing. They have a small alley, the, the big roof overhead to create a kind of a shade as well. So this building also, the sunken courtyard, it also working very well in terms of climate. Uh, when I was in the construction side, especially when the, uh, during the summer, so most of the time, I, once I want to take a break, I just go to, went to the, you know, inside of the tunnel and then micro, 
you know, climate give you so comfort, you know, make you feel so comfortable, you know, mm -hmm. the when you, you not feel no longer feel hot anymore. So this building always integrate exterior, semi inter exterior to mix together. You can go in and out, and, but I'm always under the cover in order to protect and under the, you know, even the reading, reading time, you still can walk, you can still, you know, stay inside. So this is a close to the, uh, you know, finish. So this is, I mentioned the water also represents some uh, like a water garden idea. Uh, this is, uh, you can see those stone is more like a, like a kind of a group of a fish swimming mm -hmm. underneath the water, right? You can feel the, some fish, fish, you know, back start to pop out the water. And then you feel kind of alive. You no longer feel this is just the decoration. Uh, you know, the water, the water pole, but also you feel kind of artistic, poetic way. So this is like horizontal cut. You, you can see this is like just an open arch. This garden, you know, if you stay from the inside auditorium, you can you can look outside, you can see the, you know, this water reflection beyond imperial, the ruin side, along with a kind of a Chinese, the idea for the, for the garden. So this is a, like a, uh, the, the tea house we provide. So mm -hmm. then when you get inside of this uh, museum foyer, you know, when you turn right, you're going to see the series, the arch, lie on together, you, you know, connect by the small arch. So you can see this is going to bookstore and then beyond going to see the cafe. So you can from the foyer go into the, the bookstore, design store. So this is like a foyer, you always, you know, both end is transparency glass. Uh, so you can open the, this, this window, you can open to ventilate. So mm -hmm. emphasize the wind can be really went through, especially after you know the pandemic the people feel you know natural ventilation is became to the you know so important so this building have the provision you know about this idea i call the kind of a, you know the the nature the the de, you know inspired design mm -hmm. so yeah so you can see you continue to go this is a like uh, the one that my idea, which is uh, you can drink the tea, you know, summer, the wind can, you know, to, 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 to generate this space. The very low is horizontal cut. You know, when you walk into this space, you know, this uh, horizontal cut to, uh, you know, to convince you to sit down. When you, once you sit down, you, you can look through the, you know, through the water beyond the, uh, for example, beyond is the ruin of a uh, imperial kiln, right? So we emphasize the horizon of the of size because ruin, everything is underneath, secrets mm -hmm. is underneath. So probably when you drink the tea, you know, like use the, you know, beautiful Jingdezhen, the tea cup, you can, you know, once again, you're going to associate this nature and beyond this uh, ruin, you know, people, public. So this is a, like, a, mm -hmm. the, the, I'm considered this is a very culture and the climate reflection in terms of the design. Mr. Zhu Pei, I see we have a lot of uh, comments in the, from the audience about the beautiful craftsmanship of the building. And I wonder uh -huh. if you could say a little bit about the people who actually constructed it. Um, were they people who knew how to make kilns or how, how did you locate the artisans to build it? Uh, yeah, since uh, uh, like a previous, I, I show in the historical craftsmen, you know, how they use finger to control the, the size, how they control the curvature. Uh, but in terms of this uh, modern, the construction uh, things, craftsmen is very uh, not enough, right? We, we have to rely on to the, you know, the, the summer people who know 
who have the, you know, the craftsman can training a lot of worker. Uh, we learn a lot of those things from past. Uh, for example, like, uh, you know, this kind of arch, uh, we basically just use hand. You can now use uh, any machine to, to help. So you can see this is a from the one one the the the, the space into the semi outdoor place. You know, you, looking back, this is a you know foyer of the auditorium, and also you you're going to see the light in between, right? In between, it's too arch. Uh, we integrate one one stair, people can go down. This is a one uh, probably you saw earlier in my sketch. You, early study want to create this kind of a horizontal cut, which is, this is a, actually is a water surface, beyond water surface. Uh, you can see this vertical is not, uh, I, I try to break up the very formal religion kind of a temple, you know, the church idea. You know, even this is a, you know, very symmetrical, the spatial volume, but we can use this, uh, light, you know, this is top light, most of the natural light uh, uh, combined with arti artificial light. This is also inspired by, the, by their cube. They have a lot of hole to like a observation hole, you know, on the top. They through the sometimes wood, fire, you know, through this hole. I integrate those things into the, or, you know, like a kind of a auditorium. So you can see this is a light going to be once again give a you know interesting the the quality of the materiality the wood and the brick. So this is a uh, the one ruin we integrate just beyond and then you know this this part I call the amphitheater especially for the young student uh, when they visiting this museum they can sit in here listening or they can enjoy the performance and so on. So this will also be part of a exhibition space. This is not art museum uh, or porcelain. Actually, they, they not to fear about uh, climate, right? It's a cold, you know, dry or you know, everything. So basically we also use this space as well to encourage people go in, go out. Sometime on the surface, you also can take a stair down for example, you can take a stair down to the, this uh, historical ruin. People also can sit in this uh, kind of amphitheater to create kind of, uh, um, you know, layer, layer, you know, covered everything, you know, real ruin and then porcelain. You can see also beyond the city. Uh, so this make this museum more like a flow, like music, sometimes in, sometimes dark, sometimes light. Sometimes open, sometimes you know you can see this is a different level, uh, and then you also can get in here, go beyond to not a sunken courtyard. For example, this is a you know from one to another. You can see this beautiful arch, and then they turn to very interesting um, the, the the spatial experience. So you can see this is beyond reality of the city. This is office entrance, you can see historical building. So standing from the ruin, you can also see beyond the arch and then the light courtyard. Uh, so encourage people climbing up. So in general, people inside of the museum, you have, you have motivation to move, to flow. Uh, I feel this is a, you know, I call this more like a, the, 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 the beautiful architecture experience. People needed to, you know, was attract to move from one place to another. So you can see the light going to attract you and then you go into this stair. So, and then you can maybe go down the stair. You can see this light. This is a beautiful, very rich texture of the break to remind you the historical, you know, history today. So this is a light arch. They, they make very interesting composition. People can flow down to the big, to the lower level.
uh, this is a, you know, when you go one end, the people are going to flow this very shadow stair to go to the basement level. Basement uh, use a concrete seating. So you can see, you know, the, in terms of the material, we control, we base on a very minimum way, just the wood, concrete, and brick. Hmm. Nothing else, it's a very minimum way. You can see the concrete beam, concrete stair, metal reading, and uh, this break line. So when you walk around this museum, you always can see the, the uh, I, I call this just like a multi uh, track, uh, uh, tracking you know, route, so people can choose, uh, not only based on whatever you design, but also the after the finish the, the museum tour, they also kind of walking around by themselves. They can walk up, they're walking down. So you can see always into the different level. So this is more like music, uh, not frozen music. This is like flow music, like real music. You can see the one arch by another, the beyond the landscape and the, the reality of the city. The, the one of the sunken courtyard, which is, this is the biggest courtyard we have. We, we also installed some, uh, some uh, historical, uh, you know, the, 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 the doing things excavated from here. This is different courtyard. You can see the, the turn to, you know, whole building is, I call the sponge architecture. It's, uh, it's so many micro space with a landscape. You're going to see the, you know, this is a, the one room to see now the courtyard, in, you know, many things. Mm -hmm. So this is a, you know, maybe, uh, you know, we have not much time. So basically this is, I just gave a, the whole process of the, of the design. Uh, so probably you can see this project. Uh, we have very strong ambitions, try to rediscover the root culture, the climate to, Created this, you know, architecture more natural, more, you know, sustainable. Mm. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, for this absolutely breathtaking building, it's it's truly um, astounding to look at, even in images. And I know that everybody watching uh, hopes to visit soon. I see that we've had a lot of expressions of admiration in the in the chat box, and also a few questions. So let's get to some of those. I wonder if we could go first to Anna Holcomb. Um, oh, and Mr. Jupe, you can stop sh screen sharing now too. Oh, so okay. we can see a little better. Okay. Right. Yes. Um, so Anna Holcomb, if you don't mind uh, joining us, I know you have some experience in Jing De Zhen yourself. Would you like to um, ask Mr. Jupe any questions? Um, well, first, I'm very excited about going back to Jing De Zhen when I can um, to actually uh, uh, see the museum. I saw a construction site last summer. <laughs> it's a, a very large construction site. Um, there, you know, there's issues. This, I mean, this is a very joyful thing that he's been working on, but there's a lot of quote unquote progress going on uh, in Jing De Jin where a lot of the small craftspeople and their um, their small, what we call factories, particularly in this what area called the sculpture factory are now being torn down with no place for them to go. Um, and so a lot of the uh, typical places where artists and craftspeople would go and, and find or have help making things are disappearing. And, um, you know, I, I could hear also some concern about the government and that's typically who gets, you know, um, blamed for some of this. So, I you know, it's less a question, it's more kind of a sense of what, um, how he feels this might be a positive thing, because I, I think it is, um, in terms of um, elevating um, what crafts people do and the importance of some of the history of this and not be so ready to tear it down, um, mm -hmm. which seems to be um, the kind of progress, quote unquote, that's going on in the city. Yeah, thank you for that comment. Um, Mr. Jupe, I, I was wondering about that too, because we of course often think of China as such a future oriented country now, and you know, really on to the next thing all the time, technologically and otherwise. And I was wondering what the, um, well, how this project sits within the uh, question of historical preservation, which are some of the issues that Anna is talking about also. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I just lost the first part of the, you know, the, the 
the question, but uh, but I can briefly answer. Uh, I think for the after you know thirty years, uh, the Chinese high speed uh, urbanization right now, the China getting in the different uh, stage. The people start to rethink about you know what is uh, urbanization, you know the means so we start to think about more his preservation historical how we care you know carry out our previous history you know culture nature so i think you know after uh, especially recent uh, recent in those few years we you know especially for the architects we start to to think about not only the future we also think about you know, what we can get inspired from our past. You know, there's a, a somewhat related question that I'll just ask in the interest of quickness. Yeah. We have so little time. Are you int interested in other historical architects who use similar forms? And the questioner had specifically mentioned Le Corbusier, and I think about his buildings with these shallow brick vaults that I think were inspired by Spanish architecture he had seen. Or she also mentions, um, his uh, beautiful church at Ronchamp, and just wondering mm -hmm. whether Corbusier or other historical architects were in your mind as you were developing this project. Yeah, since, uh, you know, for our generation, uh, probably we never, you know, to, to get rid of uh, the shadow of the Corbusier, right? <laughs> but everybody know his work. And, uh, but the most important thing, if I, uh, you know, but the difference, uh, the, the people have different uh, understanding about uh, Le Corbusier. But uh, I really moved by his work because uh, he considered architecture is not just visual art. He considered architecture is, uh, is experience. It's more like along with the time, with the experience. So it's, it's not only the form, actually try to recreate a kind of uh, the experience associates certain regional culture, but they use very contemporary way. So this is, a, I feel, you, you know, this is a, what I was inspired by, the, mm. by his work. Okay, thank you, Christina Panchik, for that question. Uh, another short question from Gladys To: Are there any considerations of feng shui in the building? Is that something you thought about? Uh, naturally, but uh, uh, but not totally. Uh, I feel you know feng shui is. Uh, uh, I respect feng shui because the some some part of knowledge of feng shui is talking about nature. You know the relation. For example, when you uh, when you build uh, one building, the first of all is, is not to, uh, you know, think about how you use technology to ignore the surrounding. You know, basically, you think about where's the sun, where's the wind, where's the, you know, the open field, where's the lake, where's the, the mountain. So this is a kind of a very primitive, you know, you know uh, nature knowledge, but it's so important for today's architects. Mm. Think so once we have technology, especially after industrial the revolution, we have too much power, too much technology to build the one type of building can apply to almost everywhere from the tropical area. Same building you can build in the tropical area in the very cold or desert or you know cold north area. But actually, this doesn't make sense. This is architecture not smart enough. You have to use much energy, technology to make this work. But, uh, you know, uh, architecture is supposed to be smart intelligence, but it's not uh, information or technology intelligence. It's more like a nature is inspira inspiration. We need to learn from nature. Once you're building, to know where's the sound, where's the wind, you know, what kind of, a, you, you know, this is a kind of, a, uh, you know, knowledge can make your work much easier, much more smart, much more makes sense, safe energy. 
Okay, this is a what I call the, you know, like a more sustainable. It's not only based on the technology approach. We can base on the, this natural approach. Yeah, natural appropriateness. It reminds yeah. me of your story about moving the school into the kiln building because it was warmer or taking the brick with you to yeah. stay warm during the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just one last question, uh, which is just about the use of the building. So Marian Engelbach had asked whether there's going to be an educational program in the museum, like how to make ceramics, that kind of thing. And also maybe you could say a little bit more about the exhibition program. Okay. And uh, this, this museum built, you know, specifically to, to content the porcelain produced from Imperial Lacume. Uh, and, you know, this is a major program we call the permanent uh, exhibition, but we also provide a temporary exhibition program, which is maybe for, focus on the, the ceramic art and also the education program. Things uh, we have a lot of young students or young people, they can come to Jing Zhen. They know Jing Zhen have, have a very long porcelain history, so people getting there, they can get an atmosphere, they can have some space to, you know, to meet, to, you know, to exchange the, the idea. So another important, the, the program for this museum, actually we not try to contain, you know, not try to compete uh, with uh, like a British Museum or Victoria Albert Museum or for for, you know, like a palace museum in China. We not try to use the, the, the antique or historical person to compete. Actually, the uniqueness for this museum is location. We are inside of Imperial Kiln. We can use modern information technology, which is once we saw something, uh, you, know, we, you know, we can use information to link all the, you know, museum in the world together. For example, you know, a lot of porcelain from British Museum, Victoria Museum, you know, Metropolitan Museum, actually most of the porcelain came from here. And then that museum came to the much, much more powerful, not size, not, uh, uh, not uh, quantity, it's actually, it's, uh, it's the idea to recreate a kind of, uh, this is the reason this architecture we, we try to, you know, use art kind of a prototype. We use uh, recycled material. We create so many experience space, not going to occupy by a lot the personal things. We try to release the, the space, which is to generate the idea. Mm, that sounds so wonderful. And um, yeah. it's even more reason for people to come and see it in person. Um, just my last question, uh, this is from Mark Bench. Is there going to be a book or a publication about the building? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, we have uh, published one, the, the small, the work, the, the book uh, published by the, by the, uh, the Yao Yao, <laughs> which publisher, I, I forgot. You know, it's a, uh, like uh, a Buffalo, right? Buffalo University. Yeah, yeah. You know, Buffalo you know, we are going to. Yeah, yeah. We we plan to build. Uh, uh, we 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 plan to publish some uh, some uh, you know book, especially maybe one design, just one book to 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 show the whole process. Yeah. To record the whole you know idea through the in the be you know beginning whole construction process everything. Well, the project certainly deserves that kind of attention. And um, listen, all I can say is thank you for spending this time with us. I know it's now actually Tuesday where you are because it's past midnight. <laughs> so yeah, thank you yeah. so much for sharing these time and this time and insights. I do want to let uh, folks know that on Wednesday we have, uh, of course, another design and dialogue, and we'll be in some ways uh, continuing to think about light because our uh, guest will be Michael Anastasiades the wonderful lighting designer and, and uh, designer of many other things as well. Wow. Um, but uh, meanwhile, uh, please uh, accept my very, very deep thanks for uh, sharing all of this uh, wonderful images and insight with us. We really appreciate it and wish you a good night. Thank you. It's uh, my pleasure. I'm looking forward to see more 
beautiful dialogue in the design dialogue.